some weeks, maybe months ago at this point, a group headed out from Red Rock, going north through the Havens into the Hinterlands and up into the Tempest Hills. This group was charged with gathering supplies from the mining settlements that lay in the northern mountains of the Ironlands. This group consisted of two characters we've met before. Grizz and his son, Kjarbal. Longtime friends of Eldred and her father, Unsker. The last we've heard when Grizz appeared at Red Rock once more, that Kjarval had entered into the mines to help aid in mining metals and iron in order to compile and take back to Red Rock so that they may be used for weapons and other armaments for the coming battle that's been anticipated for some time. Tonight, we look into what happened to Kjorfal Grinson from the time that he went north and into the deep mines of the mountains. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to tonight's stream of Unbound Lands, a Iron Sworn uh, solo campaign. Um, if you don't know by now, Iron Sworn is a uh, tabletop game made by Sean Tompkin. Easily find it at uh, ironswornrpg.com. Uh, the base game uh, that I've been using up to this point has been the free assets that are available there, so pretty easy to access. And if you have Foundry, uh, the virtual tabletop, you can also find it as a system there. Um, that's what I use. I'm not paid or promoted in any way. Um, I just like using these and I like playing this game. I need to calm this music down. <laughs> it's a little too dramatic for my intro here. Um, there we go. But tonight we're doing something a little different. Uh, up to this point, we're episode 23. We have been used to following the story of Eldred Un's daughter, uh, who has been our main character for a while. Um, but tonight we'll actually be trying the Delve expansion um, that is part of the Iron Sworn, which kind of goes more into deep diving into sites. Um, so we are now switching to Eldred's friend that we have met through the story, Kjarval, and what his fate may have been uh, leading up to the coming possibly end of our story here. Um, so tonight we'll be doing that and let's see how it goes. Title intro. Last we were left off. Kjarval had been traveling out of Red Rock. He had made his vows to the settlement, to the leadership that is Fargrim, uh, to aid Red Rock in the fight against what he knows as the Red Tunics. Him and his father had traveled northward through the Havens, um, braving the winter that had encompassed the lands. He passed by the familiar village of Tizerbrook, the settlement that he would often come with his father to visit his good friend Eldred. They did take a pause there, checking in on the settlement. Um, the folk that were left behind, well, for the most part. There seems to be no inflictions going on, no troubles from the elves or other firstborn that inhabit these lands. 
But after a brief rest and resupply, the troop continued traveling into the mountains. And from there, that's when things get a little more dangerous. But much of the Ironlands are individually or collectively a danger. The mountains are far more rugged. There is a lot of risk of sliding rock as well as flying waverins that are rumored to hunt these ridges. But between Kiarval and his father Grizz, they're familiar with the path. They're familiar how to hide and how to avoid to stay out of sight of any of the mountainous creatures like the waverins, like cave lions, and the like that may prowl about hunting for potential prey. They eventually come to the stop that is their home. They were always a bit of a foraging town where they uh, crafted many metals into swords or arrows or other kinds of materials to be used by um, any folk that has made a kinship with them and their village. But speaking with the people that have stayed here while their little caravan left to Tizerbook way weeks before, they learned that their mine has been closed. When asking about what caused the closure, they said that there was just a cave-in that was unexpected. Um, and even the, their local shaman did not anticipate any sort of trouble or could find or sense any magics that may have potentially caused this cave-in. It could have just been a tremble of the earth. Um, but has it has brought the struggle of being unable to mine any more materials from here. So... The group continues to the next settlements that they know of that are also mining places. And this takes them deeper, deeper through the hinterlands and into the Tempest Hills. Until eventually they come up across a settlement called Trist. It is a very small, secluded town, very nestled within the mountain rocks that if you did not know it was there, you would almost miss it. Unlike a lot of the places in the Havens where their settlements are built of stone and green roof, these homes are very much embedded into the earth and rock. Just holes dug out for doors and windows to bring in light, but otherwise they sink deep into the mountainside. Interest as Grizz goes off to make talk and in hopes of finding at least a place to sleep and potentially create kinship and bonds amongst the people here. Kirovel wanders around a little bit. He notes that this settlement has a heaviness to it. Though much of the Ironlands can be a struggle to live in and come the winter months can feel very depressed, there's a layer of something else. He 
looks around and he does catch sight of a um, woman, maybe 30s, um, just heavily cloaked as most folk are at this time of the year. Um, lots of furs, just layers and in different colored patches that are stitched up together. And her hair just puffed out and coming wild and curled and coiled out from underneath her hood. Um, Carvel approaches her. Says, uh, has there been anything strange here? It's, it's, uh, everyone seems to be kind of avoiding our group. And the woman gives a bit of a side eye as she recoils back a little bit. And with a hard, narrowed lid, she glances him over before she speaks. She says, Oh, by no offense, uh, I've been dealing with a lot of troubles. Uh, we uncovered some type of ancient site within our mind, and it seems to be a bit of a curse upon us. And of course, this piqued Caraval a little bit. He says, Curse? What do you. How could just mining bring any curse? And the woman chuckles a little bit. It says, uh, you must have great fortune for not knowing any curses or any other sort of foul magics that may lay upon a person who goes too deep. Ever since the site has opened up, our people have been getting visions. And we can't seem to make sense of it all. And Carol replies saying, well, if you've been getting visions, how come, you know, the shaman hasn't said anything after you no shaman? And the woman sighs as she goes back to um, walking towards wherever direction she had intended and says, We have been without a shaman for many weeks now. We can only hope that when the snow lessens, we can leave ourselves. And Carol kind of folds up his arms as uh, his father comes back down the path. He says, all right, boy. These folk aren't really talking too much, but... Uh, their leader has given us permissions that if we wish to search any of the nearby mines, um, we could try and mine out as much ore as we may. Um, however, they seem to feel like they will be moving and leaving this place, so they don't really seem to care what we do about here. And Carvel nods as he turns to his father, says, I just spoke to the woman walking away there. Um, she mentioned that they uncovered something ancient deep within the mines that may have brought a curse upon them. And Grizz chuckles a little bit. He's like, ah, curses. Always curses with, with folk. I wouldn't worry. Put two mine into it. I mean, you've already had the most cursed friend as anything, don't you? Carvel kind of fares his brows like, Eldred isn't cursed. I think she just just has the worst kind of luck of attracting the worst kind of things. But, uh... I, I, and he fumbles with his words a little bit as uh, his father kind of jostles his shoulder. It's like, well, it seems you and I are going to have to do some mining without any other hands, uh, as well as whoever else we have in our group. Um, again, they said all the materials are for us to use. 
But it does have me wary that they're so readily able to give away all their material like this. And Carvel nods in agreement as it is an odd anticip thing to anticipate that usually trade happens of some sort and folk, especially of the miners, tend to be a little more protective of their mines and any of the equipment they use. So to be so freely and willing to offer it is a little peculiar. But either way, the troop that has come up here to Thrist prepare themselves. They take time to find a empty home in which they can claim as their place of rest and they ready their gear and any um, other offerings of equipment and once they are well rested and prepared they go searching for the mine entrances so they move forth and within the various rocky cliff faces and jetting stone, um, they do catch sight of red paint just across a rock face, marking a big kind of slanted out X. And as they approach, they do catch just the faint darkness of a cave opening. And as they peer in, they do see that there is a bit of structure already built to support the entranceway of the cave in case of any shaking of earth that may happen. And they do see that there has been signs of folk moving around in the space that there are faint footprints, though much of it buried with the recent snows. Um, but going into the cave, as the snow kind of dissipates through entry, there is signs of uh, the walls being shoveled and picked at um, to smooth out the floors and to continue in. So... As they go in, they do find some diverging paths as the well-formed man-made structures start to dissipate out into more rocky features of stalagmites and stalactites and uh, forms making it hard to maneuver around. There is a couple passageways that move out and they split off into pairs Grizz and Caraval and then their fellow uh, troop members that came with them from Red Rock and at this point I am going to roll something straight out of our Delves expansion. So here we're getting a little mechanical. I'm gonna roll Delve the Depths. We haven't sensed any danger yet. We are mostly just looking for any potential ore deposits for iron or other metals. So with observation, intuition, or expertise, we roll wits. Now, Kiraval has decent wits. He's a plus two. And for now, whoops, I didn't mean to do that one. Ignore that. Ignore that roll. That is not the roll we wanted. Um,. He does have some assets that are cool, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So we're just going to do our wits with Caraval, which is a plus two.
Okay. Delightful. So. Carval and Grizz begin their descent into these tunnels of this seemingly forgotten mine. Maybe it was split off or it's old. For they were told there was an ancient site uncovered in here. And once in a while they do catch signs of potentially other folk having picked away at ore deposits. Once in a while they will stop and um, be able to search for their own. And definitely with that strong hit... They are able to, for sure, get some ore early on. But let's roll this opportunity. So, when we do a strong hit when we're delving deep uh, within the depths of any sort of delve here, we can find an opportunity when we get a strong hit. So, just to hit the mechanical stuff. So let me roll a d100 and I'll All right, 52. Ignore that still says Eldred. So with a 52, all right. Caraval and Grizz enter into a nice wide space. It looks like it may have been a spot that some other uh, miners and uh, iron folk stop to take rest. They see signs of um, old bed rolls that were left behind, um, scraps of wood, uh, some old, uh, somewhat rotting torches. But it feels like it is a secure area, um, leveled up a little bit from the tunnels so they don't anticipate any water rushing in around them. And they mark this as a spot that they could rest. So for now, they place some of the items that they don't necessarily need to keep carrying with them um, and mark down just a couple of ruins to say it that it was uh, Grizz and Sun here, um, just in case their other half of their party came around. And then they continue. So with the place now secure as a potential return as they dig and mine through the space, they look for more potential areas, any ore deposits, anything like that. Ooh. All right, reveal a danger. Let's see what we get. So as Kyrvul and Grizz now delve deeper, seeking these deposits, what happens? They come across a tunnel that starts to narrow in a little bit. And they walk forth. Caraval taking lead, holding the torch, and his father Grizz behind him, keeping an eye, also torch in hand, paying attention to the walls, seeing for any potential glints of ore. And there is... A slight rumble they feel within the environment, and they take pause and look up to the ceiling. And they pause, and they hold their breath. Alright. They move forward a bit more, as they look to each other with a nod.
And as they go through this tunnel, Grizz looks to the side and points out an ore deposit and puts his torch nestled into a rock form that's able to kind of fold it a little bit. And as he goes and starts picking away, Kjarval looks around this little tunnel and steps back. As he looks up, he sees that there is faint signs of what may have potentially been old architecture through this tunnel, as though there's some carved out aspects. It is very withered away, um, even though this space is very dead aired, it is damp, and you can see the little moisture droplets and just coating and sheeting the sides. They see so looks and hears the pinging of his father's pickaxe against the wall. He sees just little cracks start to form up and soft rumbling before Kjarval reacts. And let's see. Uh, yeah, let's do a face danger. And he's going to be as fast as he can. Alright. So very quickly, as it registers in Caraval's mind what is happening, he shouts to his dad and rushes forward, almost tackling him up into a bear hug as he goes and moves and the wall within the tunnel starts collapsing down. They hit the floor and they continue to feel just that rumble start coming up and more bits of rock start falling down. So Caraval very quickly rises up trying to take his father up with him and they start rushing back the way they came to the site that they had secured. So that is a tunnel that is no longer available to them. That they just managed to avoid. Grizz grumbles. This is stupid of him to not even observe the walls to see about any structural integrity and he feels a little bit foolish that he went for just a small deposit of ore instead of considering the safety of the situation but they were both safe they both made it out unharmed so now they're going to try one of the other passageways that they saw. All right. All right, we rolled an interesting one for facing a danger. So we we're trying to delve deeper and Caravongras do find a path that goes deeper. Ever. We get to roll twice now. So we have an 8 and we have an 85. Check theme of card. So this mine as they continue through the spaces and through the tunnels, they do see signs of very ancient architecture. It doesn't resemble anything the Firstborn, and there are many folk of the Firstborn that exist within the Iron Man. It's not just the elves or the giants, but the, there is the Barrow and other more creature-like peoples that exist. But these architectures seem beyond their pure view. They hmm. 
even for a Kjarvel to try and describe them. There is a delicate nature to the design work, to the hidden stone pillars and carvings that dig into the walls. Most of it is eroded, but there's signs of people that have exceptional carving skills and craftsmanship. Something they don't see in their own structures when they've carved out their own mines or even amongst their own settlements. So. We rolled an eight, which is check card theme. Our theme is an ancient to go into mechanical stuff here. So now I roll a D30. This is gonna be fun. Because there's no such thing as a D30, but in Foundry, we can make it happen. 22. And as the pair, the father and son duo, moves through their space, they start catching signs. Signs of life of a little more violent nature. Of old splats of blood on walls and pooled but dried on the ground. Gouges within the walls cutting through the ancient architecture. Definitely signs of beasts. And as they continue down this path and starting to keep hands on their weapons, Kjarvel himself putting away his pickaxe for his true axe and making sure his shield is prepared on his arm. The pair move forward and they feel just a sudden brush of air and a grind of metal. And the pair... What do the pair do? Well, what does Kjarval do? Let's... Let's roll his wits, see if he can maneuver this. Alright. Kjarval, quick to observe and quick to act. He feels the brush of wind and he hears the grinding of metal. And for his thought, he darts forward. But his father moves back and shouts out his name. But as he does, there is another collapse that comes down between the pair as they split off. And as the stone collapses down, almost like a door opened up above them, both, at least Kjarval, can look back and sees not only was there stone pouring down, but little metallic caltrops, about as big as a hand, all pointed and jagged, and other materials coming down within the stone as though to do the most damage. Kjarval has never experienced or heard of such a trap or such a thing existing, but he looks at it and he can just hear the muffled yells of his father on the other side. Hmm. 
and carefully, Carol is trying to move away the stone and the metal caltrops. But he does hear his father. It's like, Kyoval! Kyoval! Are you there, boy? Are you fine? And Kyoval replies back in a loud voice. Yes, father. It missed me. Sounds like you're okay. And Gris says, I? You stay where you are. I'm gonna go track down the others and we'll come back and get you out of here. And Carvel nods. Says, All right, um... I'll, I'll try and work my way on this side, and if I happen to break through before you're back, I'll come to you at that site we found. And Chris says, all right, just be careful. And he hears the sounds of his father's footsteps dissipate down the hall as Kyrval sits in a space the dim torch, and peers around. The tunnel does open up in a wider space, but it, it's so dark you can't really see. But does curiosity get the best of him? Let's see what the oracle can tell us. I like using tools. <laughs> if I can, I can't. If I can't find it, then we won't use it. Not finding the table fast enough, so I won't worry about it. Oh, wait, maybe it's this one? Yes. 50-50 chance. Let's go. No. Oracle says no. <laughs> Alright. Well. Two tunnels have now collapsed in the presence of Kiribal. Now the second time him being on the other side of it. And a lot of noise that has created and echoed out through the space. He's going to look around for a moment, actually. I'm going against the Oracle. He's going to look around. But after all the noise, he's actually going to do it with stealth, because he's not too sure of any other potential traps that could be in waiting here. So he's going to try and keep a careful foot and be on the lookout for any potential new things about. Alright. He does knock some rocks as he goes a little bit, keeping close to a wall. Do good progress. And as he moves about the space a little bit to see... Ooh, can we get a denizen? Let's see what we get. There is no deadness in there, so I'm gonna roll it again. Awesome. So as he moves, at first he thinks it's just the rocks that he may be kicking. As he pauses and is 
maybe 20, 30 feet away from the cave-in, begins to hear it. Chittering. Rhythmic and layers of it chittering about and echoing through the cavernous tunnel. And as he raises up his torch, you can see the ever slight glint of eyes peering in his direction and just and arachnophobia warning, I guess, as these giant creatures, legs prodding forward, multiple eyes crowning their head. These are chitters. Their mandibles snapping hard, creating that chittering sound. And there is numerous amounts of them coming forward towards Kyorval. He holds the torch tight in his arm with the shield and he raises up his axe. As now we got to deal with a swarm of chitters. They are not nice. So we are now going to do facing our danger. Yeah, we're going to enter the fray. We're going to do some combat. Well, what's a good thing to do? Uh, heart. We'll, we'll do heart. Oof. So for Curable, turning, and he's looking down the tunnel and seeing just the waves of legs and eyes coming out towards him. It does jostle him a little bit. Let's see. I will say endure stress after all that, given the cave-in and what he's about to do. He is fine. So he sh as he's recovering from the initial shock and dread that starts to come in from the situation, the chitters clamor up and begin to try and snap at towards him. Let's do iron as we are in close combat. We hit. I'm going to double check to make sure because he has different assets than our good friend. Meant to add a plus one. So let me re-roll that. I'm not sure. Alright, so clash iron, do a plus one for the shield. There we go. Strong hit. So Kyarval, looking at the situation, he brings up his shield and the critter, one of the critters that are on him right away come down and pound their head into the shield and the metal ting kind of ricochets off and echoes down the hall. So with a strong hit we get a plus one to our momentum. It is only a bludgeoning with the shield so we only get a one on our progress. It will lead me. It won't let me. And we put the critter in our progress. That's how we track our stuff. If it will let me. So Kyarval pinged the critter off, or the chitter, <laughs> I want to say critter, the chitter off his shield, and then he comes around now with a slightly more advantage as he bashes them off, and with that bash, the flame of the torch highlights all the eyes and shadowed figures of these arachnid-like insect no, like insects, and he comes around and swings down his axe. Bop, 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 
papa, papa. And that's not a castle. So do a iron strike. Ooh. So coming in with his axe roaring through the fire, he's scares off some of them with the flame and then comes in for the closest ones hooking up the axe and doing an upswing sending the creature off and he comes in as he comes up with the swing he uses the momentum and strength to come back down on the next critter cheater And gets another strike into the next closest one. Boom. But he does feel one start to pull his leg. And as they are very large insects, it takes a lot for him to keep up on his feet. So he comes back around to bring his shield down for protection. I forgot the last one. Good hit though. All right, we haven't rolled pay the price in a while. And we got a weak hit in, so let's pay the price. Let's see what we get. You're separated from something or someone. Well, we're already separated from our someones. But in this moment, Kiroval, he feels his leg get pulled and suddenly he's yanked through just the wave of the chitters. And they all start trying to prod their legs down and snap their mandibles at him as he gets dragged all the way through. And just one in particular pulling him on. You can hear underneath all the mandibles that are snapping, just almost an acidic sizzling sound. As these insects are known for having pretty acidic uh, saliva, that he does not want to get hurt by. So as he gets dragged, he's going to swing wildly both with the torch and with his axe. A miss and a complication. All right. So I'm gonna say he needs to endure harm. He is being dragged on through and many of the chitters are trying to bite down on him as one rather large one is trying to drag him deeper into the tunnels and caves that now Kiarval is losing sight of any potential direction or sense of where he was. Let's see. Since we're in the mine... I'm going to reveal an additional danger. Encounter a hostile denizen. Well, we're already doing that, but let's let's see if we get an even worse one as he's being dragged on through. <laughs> All right. This will be introduced in a moment. The Caraval is being dragged viciously and violently through the space, feeling the turns as he keeps swinging wildly to protect himself and trying to kick off um, the creature that is pulling him along. Hmm. 
You know what? Let's see. No, we're not gonna do that one. Okay. Seeing if maybe one of his assets may be beneficial, but it's more of a prep one, I believe. So he's going to try and swing out. He is not doing well. He's not doing well at all. So he is swinging, and as he looks down towards his leg, he's seeing the kind of acidic spit dripping from this large chitter that has him and, and is dragging him. And it goes to try and take a bite on him. So we are going to endure harm and see if we can avoid it. Whew. The bite comes down on his leg. And he does feel a jolt of pain, but as before it can get too tight on him, he kicks it right square in the head. And it jolts back. It's clicking madly about being struck in the head. So we get a momentum from that. Because we got a strong hit on our endure harm. And very quickly, um, Terrible's going to jump up. He's actually going to try and secure an advantage. With aggression. He's surrounded. He's got bugs on him. It's not fun. So he's going to get super aggressive about it. He's swinging his axe. He's swinging the torch. And if he hits something with his shield, super great. So we're going to do that. Weak. Good momentum, but he does maneuver to try and not have them completely surround him. He starts going up towards a wall. So we do another clash. So a weak hit. But he clashes down with his axe. I'm going to suffer a momentum so I can do an additional harm on it. So Kyarval basically pinned up to a wall. He's swinging wildly, bashing with shield, cutting with axe, shoving torches into the faces of critters. He almost enters a berserk state as he goes and tries to end this battle. Because we have a lot of things on our side. Oh, we can't. So. <laughs> I know what this is, okay. So as he's swinging wildly, practically blindly within the depths of this supposed ancient mine. The critters of the ones that were following in from the behind kind of pause and start to skitter away, moving into, back into the darkness and running off. And Careful pauses for a moment as much as his adrenaline is running high. No other Chitters are now biting at him. And heavy breathing. <sighs> he looks around, moving his torch, trying to slow himself so he doesn't miss anything. As a new foe hangs in the darkness.
Garval now sees that he has stepped into some sort of structured space. This isn't just a mine space. This is... There's something more here that he sees as he waves his torch around. He's almost in like a circular structure. There is layers that head down into the depths and layers that climb up high. Almost like a cylindrical coliseum type space. There is pillars that reach up to the other floors. And as he just very slowly moves his torch around, the space is just too large for the torchlight to reach and it's already been dimming down. And he panics a little bit as he moves the torch around to try and catch any sign of where he may have come from. Which... I'm gonna change this to escape the depths. As he looks around the space, trying to figure out which potential tunnel or hole that the chitters have pulled him through. The soft sound of the chitters kind of disappear as another sound starts to overtake from deep in the depths, down that tunneling hole that he cannot make out the bottom of. He hears soft groaning and growling. He takes a breath and Knowing he doesn't have too much time for any potential danger that's not coming for him, he ducks down and hides behind a pillar, which I'm going to see if he can. Okay, that's fine. He ducks down and hides behind one of the pillars, and he is going to start focusing his mind and invoke. Now, I haven't done any ritual assets on the stream yet. So what invoke does is he is going to start feeling out for any magical essence within the space. And when he does open his mind to it, he does feel that there is magic here. It is ancient. And though he was trained to know of darkness, to mold it into an essence of use, whatever is here is more prolific than what he's been used to. But for the short time he has, as the sounds of the groans and growls get louder, he focuses his mind trying to take in the essence of his surroundings. He doesn't get anything. In fact, as he tries to focus, and realizing the kind of magic that he doesn't quite understand that is present as he's trying to pull it in, it overwhelms. And causes him stress. He 
screams get louder and he feels thuds two big thuds kind of in the space behind him as he is nestled behind a pillar as a voice that he does not know echoes out and gurgles and growls scared because of that stress. And as Caraval just tries to look around the pillar to catch any glimpse of this creature now that he had dropped his torch to kind of give space between his hiding spot. He catches a glimpse of some type of hard to even explain what he's looking at. There is horns. There's patches of fur. There's multiple eyes. Dark skin. And a scent of rot. One arm that is lifting it up is thick like a tree. While the other one is a little more spindly. eyes have a soft glow of red yellow and it peers around and you can hear kind of a growling snort as it sniffs in the air the air is very very still in this space and very quickly Caraval realizes the dangers So. He's going to try and actually He's going to try and use his expertise in insight and observation. He's going to look around seeing that there is pillars holding up walls. He knows some of these structures are quite weak and old that he might be able to utilize. But as he goes to try and look around, suddenly there's this force that slams through the pillar he is behind and sends him forward. Let's see if he can endure the harm. We do. So he's sent forward and he braces his uh, shield arm up and hits into the wall. And as he looks back, he just sees this monstrous, kind of mutated abomination looming over the torchlight. It places a hand down right on top of it, and it snuffs it out. There is now nothing but darkness and the soft glow eyes of this monstrosity that is before him. Could try and get away from this encounter. It is quite formidable. He 
know, I never rolled battles, so let's try rolling that. Jarval only having sights on the eyes as the torchlight start very quickly dampens out. He readies up his axe and chucks it. No. So he chucks his axe, but the creature, as though in anticipation, he can almost feel just the waft of air and the smell of rot as it swipes the axe out of the air, and he hears it clink far into the depths in the distance of the darkness. He now only has his shield. And he does have a pickaxe. <laughs> but he is in complete darkness. Let's see. No, he's can't really do much. He feels a very quick grip kind of just coming down upon his chest and awkward fingers elongated wrapping around him as he feels a sudden pull of being launched forward. I'm going to give him a fighting chance. He's going to fight in the dark. He has no idea what's going on. He could very well fall to his death. Let's go, Curaval. Boom. He pulls out the pickaxe. Now as his alternate and quickly comes down and slams into whatever hand is holding on to him. He does hear the groan of this nightmarish creature as he gets arm off and because it is a piercing slash slashing weapon gets two there and with that slam into his axe he feels the grip just loosen for a second as a splurt of liquid splashes onto his face he falls back and lands hard onto the ground and he feels just the heat of where the torch once was Pay the price. There it is. Roll. Carval is very separated from his people. He, as he rises up, he realizes without anything to light his way. There is no way for him to turn this around. He's got to take care of this creature whenever it tries to reach out for him. And hopes that he can survive. So we're going into another clash action. As he whips around... And with the pickaxe in hand, he feels the breath of the creature and he comes around and slams up, much like his familiar wielding axe motion. And he does feel the pickaxe strike into something and hook it. You do a strong hit. And I'm going to invoke his Sunderer combat talent with the pickaxe. We're going to be a little flexible here. So we do an additional harm while losing a momentum. So when he feels it hook up, he pulls back on it to really drag out the weapon through the mass of this monstrous form. So we get the, additional, the two harm from 
the piercing weapon, then additional harm from Sunderer. As he's ready to just rip and tear through this night spawn. And you know what? It was a strong hit, so why not take the additional inflict harm? Just do as much harm as he can. And he's just pulling wildly, yelling, full brute force, yanking back on the pickaxe, just feeling it hook through muscle and tendon until it strikes bone. And then as it breaks out from the surface of the creature as it roars and growls in pain and lurches back in the darkness. Caraval quickly follows up to try and strike it again where it he was able to notice where the eyes were. <gasps> Yay, we got an opportunity this time. Ah, uh, doubles. So, he swings it, catching... What he thinks may be the head as he sees the glow of the eyes blink out. And he does hard strike within the side of the head. And an opportunity. Yeah, he's gonna take the opportunity to end this. He swings up the pickaxe and kind of jumps up into the air as he grabs forth blindly in the darkness. He's going to try and bring the pickaxe down on the creature. <gasps> Yay! And as he does, he feels his hand meet its snout. It is wet and hot and he can feel the air just push through his fingertips as he grabs onto it and brings up that pickaxe. And with all of his weight, he kind of brings himself forward, gripping the head as he slams it down into the center of the night spawn's head. And he feels the creature groan and sway. But let's see. Let me see. As the creature does one last thing in its dying moment. I'm going to do a toss up here. Leave it to the oracle to decide. So it was. Does Carval go down? Or does Carval avoid going down with the creature? And on a 1 to 50? No. No, he does not avoid it. So as he's pulling the pickaxe out, he feels the body of the creature swaying forward and he tries to let go, but it's already too late as momentum is going forward and the feeling of the creature's body moving down into that circular depths that they were. He's going to try to face danger and speed. He's going to try and use edge to try and grab an edge or any type of form. Uh, he does not grab anything. So as he goes to try and jump off to go and grab onto a ledge, he just feels it slip at the very tip of his fingers. And he slams on one platform before rolling and slamming into another. So he does take some health against that. But after now falling some depth and he hears the body of the creature continuing down and down. The sound of the critter chittering 
has gone silent. And Carol finds himself in a pure dark space, not knowing where he is. He fumbles with a tinder box and starts sparking it to try and get a light. And with another little torch, as they all carry multiple just in case, he lights a torch and looks around. He does see he's fallen maybe 30 or so feet from where he may have been. It's hard to say. But let's see. As our final roll of the night, if Caraval can fight his way out. Dread sets in. As Caraval realizes he does not have sort of tools to climb out of this situation. His axe was thrown somewhere into the depths of darkness. So only now only has the now tarnished and almost broken pickaxe and his shield. He only has so much many supplies. And he now sees he's in a very ancient and dangerous place. He doesn't know if he can find his way back from whence he came, but he needs to find a way out. And I will do a little dangerous just to see. now in the damp dark dimmed light of his torch as he, his situation kind of sinks in he now sees more completed architecture and it is heavily bloodied very old almost blackened marks smeared across the surfaces cracks and brokenness of the earth and as he looks down he does see there is now a bottom and he sees the creature just half on the side it's one arm dipped into a deep hole that is glistening and hints of red just being able to be picked up in the light size. As he thinks about his sworn vows, and most importantly, the one he made to Eldred. But he is unsure if he'll ever find his way out. And that is tonight's session. <laughs> um, fun and interesting. Definitely, um, don't know how Caraval's ever going to get out of that. <laughs> and apparently this is becoming a multi-thing for him. I wasn't sure if he would go in and out, um, but now we know why uh, his dad had to return to Red Rock without him. So thank you for joining me. Um, hope you liked the session as we try out some of the Delve uh, expansion stuff from Iron Sworn. Um, also, there was wait no this the side the side um, new artwork. Uh, if you're careful, gotta get a little hint of what he looks like and stuffs. Um, and yeah, so feel free. You know, if you like what we've done here, feel free to drop a follow or just 
Uh, follow me on other spaces. I'm on Twitter with this candle, um, which is just underneath my chin here, the handle direction of hands. There we go. Um, Ghost Candle on Twitter, where I make my announcements for when I'm playing uh, tabletop games, when I'm posting art, um, and when I'm doing anything on Ko-Fi, like launching my commissions. I have two slots open if you want character art. Uh, they're a little different than the portrait here, but you can check them out on Ko-Fi to see all the examples and the pricing tiers. Um, otherwise, I have nothing else to say. I don't think. I'm just getting back into streaming again. I took a bit of a break. Things were just feeling a little overwhelming. Um, so needed a bit of a break, but hoping to get back into it. And I appreciate all the views that you may offer. I'm getting ever so close to hitting affiliate. And it's just that viewing number. I have to break that three viewers per stream. Um, and if you happen to be watching this on YouTube as a VOD that I post up there to archive... Thank you. Thank you for watching the video. And if you got to episode 23, well, I hope you enjoyed everything so far. I do my best as someone playing solo. It is definitely a different experience. And if you want to experience Iron Sworn for yourself, whether solo or with a group, it has options for that. Um, again, ironswornrpg.com has the base game that we use. And you can buy the Dell stuff as well there. Or if you want to play the space version, Star Forged, you can look into that too. All great stuff. Uh, thank you once again. Lots of love. Remember to hydrate and enjoy the rest of whatever time zone you are in. Day, night, evening. And we'll see you next time. Bye.